Okay, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Pilar Gold, which is a Brazilian focused gold producer with aspirations to aggressively grow its annual production. The company also owns the Leva Gold Mine in Northern Finland, which features a 6,000 ton per day processing facility. The group has annual production of 45,000 ounces of gold and medium term aspirations to reach 125,000 ounces of gold per year. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Jeremy Gray, who's the Chief Executive Officer, along with Jim Jackson, who's the General Manager and Director, uh, Paolo Afonso de Aguirre, and Roberto Matsumoto Cova at Pilar Gold. Uh, the format of the webinar uh, today will be uh, Jeremy, Jim, Paolo, and Ro Roberto will provide an introduction to Pilar and give an update on the latest activities, particularly as they relate to the spin out of its Leva gold mine. And then in the second part, you'll, we'll take your questions live. So please send us your questions using the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. Um, and I'll note you can type in your questions at any point throughout the presentation. So to start, we'll get through the disclosures and then uh, move on to the presentation. For Pilar Gold, there may be some forward looking statements made on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Pilar Gold corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of in individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice for investment. Please see our most recent research uh, located on our website for Pilar specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll uh, turn it over to Jeremy, Jim, Paolo, and Roberto uh, for, for, um, uh, to update you on Pilar Gold and what you have to look forward to. Take yeah, on. great, Taylor. Thank you very much. And thank you, Red Cloud, again, for your amazing support over the last 18 months. Um, you got the dream team on the call today um, from Brazil and from Finland. So um, we, we actually wanted to use today as an opportunity to introduce you to our second, our new company, that we've uh, announced is spinning out of Pilar. We started Pilar in Brazil four years ago. Um, it's been a, a you know really challenging but also exciting journey. Uh, we're producing 40 to 45,000 ounces at the moment um, from the PGDM mine. We're bringing on the super high grades, the Tau mine. We're bringing on um, Trey Baracus. Uh, and I think Brazil will be 150,000 ounce producer over the next 18 to 24 months. And along that journey, we were very lucky to uh, to 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 win um, the bid for the Liver uh, mine in Finland. Uh, we'd be we we've been a big fan of Liver for the last couple of years, and uh, Liver came out of administration. It's the old Otso gold, um, and it is a, a really beautiful asset. In fact, um, I'm going to put now my Liver hat on um, because um, this is a really an exciting. Um, company that we're launching and uh, we'll span it out to shareholders of Pilar. So every Pilar share, shareholder receives one new LIBOR share um, for every eight that they own of Pilar and uh, a pre-money valuation of only 15 million Canadian. We're in the middle of uh, um, a 10 million Canadian fundraise, which will give it a 25 million valuation market cap post-raise. And that will be bringing on stream if Paolo, you just uh, pass through one or two slides as, as I speak, um, that's going to bring on basically uh, a 50 to 80,000 ounce producer this summer. Um, we've uh, we've inherited, um, as it's come out of the administration process, it's debt free, it's creditor free, uh, and Jim has the pleasure of, of uh, restarting this mine and the challenge uh, um, for this summer, uh, 6,000 tonne a day mill, potential to get to 80,000 ounces. I'm going to let Paolo and Roberto talk about the, um, the significant upside to that resource of 840-odd thousand ounces, and uh, I'll save that for them. And uh, we'll have a 1450 all-in sustaining cost. So at these prices, we think it's a perfect time to bring in on Europe's biggest gold mill. This is actually bigger than Agnico Eagle's um, uh, Kitala mine up the road. It's lower grade um, and it's fully built. And Paolo, just let's show the guys what we're talking about here as you go through in the middle of Finland. Keep going, mate. Show that map. Um, you're going the wrong way. Did you want to? Yeah. And then um, keep going. Um, that's where we are. Um, it is a, a beautiful part of Finland. It's, um, 
you could have the Lapland Express train that goes literally past our mine. Um, you could imagine every infrastructure that uh, imaginable is is right on our doorstep, and uh, we, we uh, are hosting visits up there on a regular basis for our investors. If you just keep going, mate, and I'll just skip through, but 50,000 ounces is our target for 24, um, and I won't go through the list because I'll let Jim talk about what he's doing. Um, but we basically have, um, if you show on the next slide, mate, the um, what we have here, we have a 6,000 tonne a day state-of-the-art mill. We have um, the great land package, but we're actually only focused on the two open pits that we have um, that we're working on to restart this summer. Um, we have the south pit, the north pit, the New Hope Pit, and also importantly, 3 million tonnes of low-grade stockpile sitting right next to the mill, which is 34,000 ounces of contained recovered gold. That is a free uh, free dig and free tummy filler for the operation. Keep going, mate, and just show the um, couple more slides of what it is. This is what uh, we we bought um, for Pilar. Uh, cost us 30 million Canadian of uh, Pilar shares, 10 million warrants. The seller was Pandian. We were super thrilled when we, re we received the good news from Deloitte's in November that we had won the bid. Um, and uh, there you have it, a, a very young set of open pits uh, that uh, I think will be, probably be running for the next 30 years. So when you think about it, pre-money 15 million Canadian, post-money 25, um, and in return, Pilar will, um, has 15 million of vendor finance that it, it will receive back to Finland over the next three years but the covenants are extremely light. It's 5% interest and it's repayable only on the last day of the third year, end of the third year. So it's friendly finance and um, Jim, I think, will uh, easily manage that and there's no pressure on him to pay that back. Um, there's that beautiful stockpile. In fact, Jim was there yesterday, just this morning sending the video. Um, all the snow's melted, the sun is shining and we're ready to turn this beautiful um, operation back on stream. What else... Um, there's the team. I cannot speak more highly of a wonderful team. Finland uh, produces great people, incredibly well-trained, um, educated. We have, um, and, and Jim is our general manager, and I'll, I'll let him discuss that, but we've had a really great start with the team. There's an air of excitement about restarting the operation um, next month in terms of just getting work done. We're already ordering long lead items um, chemicals and uh, it's really important that we take advantage of this summer and uh, hopefully deliver into a really strong gold market going into the second half of this year. So the payback on investment I think is going to be less than one year and uh, that's why the demand for this raise has been really strong. We've priced it to, to um, make sure we do get started this summer and um, we're not proud. We, we, there's no promote. There's, it's a ground opportunity for everyone to come in in the seed round at 50 cents, which, as I said, is post money. It's actually 26 million Canadian post money. Kiko, mate, I'll just, and then I'll, I think I'm going to hand it over. Uh, it's just us, the board. We're the same board as Pilar. Um, we like to, consistency in the management. Our, our, our way that we manage is to really let our footballers play their natural style of football, whether it be in Brazil or in Finland. We generally have a, we're very light corporate wise. Our overhead costs are very, very small. And being private, we move quickly. We can do acquisitions that I think a lot of public guys have struggled to do, particularly last year. There's the cap table. I'll just show you that. 16 million pre-money, 26 post-money, and the friendly note of 15 million that uh, Jim will pay back sometime over the next three years, but no pressure whatsoever. We just want him to have a great start with the team. And the replacement value today is at least 500 million Canadian, if you even get the chance to get the funding, the permits, all the time that it takes. And we have a state-of-the-art operation. Now, I really would like – oh, uh, there's some of the targets. If you just go, you can see these early-stage targets that Jim would like to put in place. We're going to list this on in Q4 on the TS, either the TSXV or the CSE. And we're in a lot of discussions with cash shells at the moment who really like the story. Um, this will be our first listing out of the Pilar family. Um, Pilar will list a little bit later, but this is a really, I think, it's going to be super well received. And even if we came out, let's say this seed rounds at 50 cents, if we came out at $2, uh, the market cap's only going to be 100 million for a replacement value of 500. So you can see, you know, this is really a lot of explorers in Finland trade at much higher valuations than us, um, and they don't have anywhere near 
the development um, that we have. So Jim thinks uh, I'll, I'll let I'll go on and let let Jim explain that a bit later. But that's the use of proceeds of the ten million. But what I really want to do now, because when we first um, when we first started bidding for this asset, um, it was all about the mill. This is one of the best mills you'll find in the industry. It's the biggest mill in Europe. It's state of the art. It's super well maintained. There's a little bit of work that the guys want to do before we restart. But, uh, there was always the attraction that it's a great mill, but we were never sure about the geology. And the work that uh, Paolo and Roberto have done with uh, Sam and Carly in Finland, so it's been a joint effort, Brazil and Finland, um, over the last four months since we acquired it. I just want Roberto to explain why we think we have an ore body that's at least 2 million ounces and will give us a mine life of possibly at least 30 years. So, mate, um, I would like to hand it over to the guru. He's our best leapfrog man in the company in Brazil. Um, he speaks better English than me, and uh, he's just a genius. In fact, my son and I were sitting down there with Paolo and Roberto only two weeks ago at the office in, in Brazil, and I could spend hours listening to this man. So, Roberto, over to you, mate. If I could just um, just see if you can load up the leapfrog. This is a, a leapfrog uh, geology 3D uh, example of why we think we've got a massive ore body sitting below a world-class mill and um, this is going to be a phenomenal story over over the over the years ahead so are you okay to go back to leapfrog there roberto i don't know how to do that but you you're yes. great mate over to you mate yes okay uh i will just turn the screen share on Leapfrog, just to give you an idea, is what we use in Brazil. It wasn't actually um, in place when we acquired um, the asset in Finland. And over to you, mate. Go for it. Uh, oh, hi there. Uh, my name is Roberto. Uh, first of all, I want to apologize for my English. It's not as good as Jim said, Jeremy said. Uh, here we have uh, an overview of the whole uh, database in the Liva mine. Here we have the North Beat. And here the south bit. Uh, those green traces correspond to our diamond drilling campaign performed by our exploration team. And this head trace correspond to our great control campaign, uh, which consists mostly of RC, reverse circulation drilling. Uh, now I'll show you a lateral view. Uh, we're looking north here. And as you can see, while the RC drill holes they are very shallow, uh, just around and inside the, the active pits. Our diamond drill hole campaign, they go further down, even below 200 meters below the sea level. Uh, and so I decided to compare uh, the database to see if there were any differences. So I got here uh, the all the samples above 0 0.3 grams per ton. Uh, I divided them in three groups. As you can see, the green one goes from the surface down to minus 25 meters. The, it's the shallow zone. The intermediary zone here in yellow goes between minus 25 to minus 150 meters. And the deep zone, which consists only of diamond drill holes, uh, goes from minus 150 meters down below. As you can see here uh, in the statistics, uh, the mean values and the median values for our three groups are almost the same. The mean value is around 1.45 grams per ton, and the median value is around 0 0.7 grams per ton. All the samples are the selected or above 0 0.3 grams per ton. And when we compare these mean values with the mean value of the our last block model, as you can see here, all, all the blocks above 0 0.3 grams per ton, we can see that our current block model is, is still a little bit conservative, and we hope to improve it, getting it more like the database itself. Uh, now I will show you all the samples that we got in Liva. Here you can see all the the samples above 0 0.3 grams per ton, which corresponds to our low grade cutoff. And our high grade cutoff is of 0 0.7 grams per ton. And these are all the samples 
and, and now I want to show you how these samples were interpolated with our structural data gathered from our orientated through holes in order to, to get those, these two domains here, our east domain, west domain, and our east domain, I'm sorry, uh, I, I put uh, different name, names here. Uh, and these two domains, uh, we, we hope to, to get, get on the geostatistics and do our own estimations. But now I'm presenting you the latest block model. All the, all the blocks displayed here are above 0 0.7 grams per ton. And as you can see, we have blocks corresponding to our, our samples. So this block model, it, it is something like a, a estimation exercise. And this block model uh, has almost 2 million ounces with a cutoff grade of 0 0.7 grams per ton. But this was, it wasn't reported because the, the values that were reported were just in the, inside this resource pit that was built with a, I'm sorry, uh, presenting live with LeapFrog. <laughs> uh, uh, all the resources that were reported, as, you, as you've seen in the last slide presentation, are inside this pit. This corresponds to 800,000 ounces, but we have lots of inferred resources and exploratory potential resources just outside this pit, below this pit, but still in the, in the lava area. So we hope that uh, we can keep drilling while we develop our current pits. And our current understanding is that the mine area itself uh, below and around the pits has great potential for resource addition and conversion. And this is what we hope to do in the next few years. Uh, and now just to complement, I will show you the the lithology database that we also uh, modeled and imprinted in the block model in order to in order to get uh, a geological model that could help us in all kinds of uh, ore sorting and and blending and so here we have our group of lithologists here and we div I divided them mainly in three groups: the mafic ones that corresponds to our uralite rocks, the intermediate group that corresponds to our granodiorite. As you can see, the north pit is most of it is in, is hosted in the intermediate rocks, and the and some of it host, is hosted, hosted in the mafic rocks, and our south pit is mixed between mafic rocks, intermediate rocks, and also felski granitic rock. Uh, this is our block model uh, already with the geological model imprinted in it. And so we can perform our mining plans, taking into consideration both the uh, gold grades and the, the lithology, since each one of them has a different answer, a different behavior in the in the plant here i will get you some statistics of the lithologies here we can see that the mean values of all the samples above 0 0.3 grams per ton corresponds to our previous statistics for the database with a, a, a little increment in the mean value for the mafic hosted and when we compare it to the block model we can see that the block model is a little bit underestimated and we hope to improve this in our next models. 
very soon. And uh, I guess that's, that's it. And could I just, uh, Roberto, just for the, for the everyone, could you just go back to the where you showed the pit initially with the holes, with all the holes down like this at the beginning? Because yes. obviously this has never been very, uh, it's never had a deep drilling program. And, and from what I understand from you and Paolo, it's open in all directions. So does that mean that we probably might have more than 2 million ounces? If you just um, show the historical holes that you had at the start, because um, there's a lot of areas that are missing drilling as well, from what I understand. Yes, uh, we we we, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we really one, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, have ju just just a, a few drill holes get here very deep, and we know for sure that the mineralization goes deep down. So as we keep drilling, uh, we could for sure add some resources. For instance, in this area here or in this area here where we got almost none of these deep through holes. So yes, we can expect it. It's reasonable. Okay. So that's, look, yeah, that's, I think uh, maybe Paolo, do you want to just say a couple of words? What you, cause you know, you're obviously, you're very used to these ore bodies. We have these sorts of ore bodies in Brazil. Maybe your perspective, mate, cause you've been working on this for the last four months. Yes, for sure. We are only talking about the, the area, the brownfield area around the mine. And we see that we ha don't have any constraint in the geology that says that we don't have continuity going deep. Okay, so we, we, we have uh, as well the geophysics and the geochemistry works made by the previous operators. And we see that the structures, they still run into to the northeast and to the south. In the south area, we have one uh, target, uh, exploration target with a lot of geochemistry and we still have to, to drill. So uh, we have a lot of opportunities to grow in resources and uh, in, the, in these directions and going too deep as well. So it's a, it's a great opportunity uh, when, when we, as soon we start to, to drill and to continue to go deep in the open pit and it's possible to have good very good surprise on that that's great mate so look i'm going to hand it over to jim now um jim's obviously got the challenge and the you know the exciting challenge of restarting uh, in the next month or so um and uh mate do you want to give the guys uh, and the girls a perspective of the last four months in finland you, you jim's my right hand man in brazil we thought he was absolutely ready to take on the challenge and basically to restart what is going to be a phenomenal success, we believe. Go, yeah, mate. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jeremy. Hi, guys. Yeah, Brazil's certainly very different to uh, to Finland. We arrived here in December with the family in a blizzard after leaving Brazil. So yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a culture shock, <laughs> a climate shock. But the mine itself is just a pleasure to work at. The, the Finns are fantastic to work with, highly educated and they say a Swiss clockwork, it's fin clockwork. Everything is done to the nth degree. The mine itself is extremely well laid out. The pits are very close to the mill, it's very short haulage distances, same as the waste stock piles or very short haulage distances. Uh, the pits at the moment are very shallow. It's just an early stage mine, middle stage mine. So the plant itself, not even the paint's worn off some of the equipment, it's still in I keep saying this, but in very good condition. We've got to do a little bit of work on the uh, mills, just uh, replace some of the liners. They're already on order, uh, just waiting uh, to be shipped. And then we can install them. Uh, a few bits and pieces for the Nelson, uh, some decks for the screens, and then just some general maintenance, just run through our pumps, make sure the bearings are all good. Just really basic stuff. So we're looking forward to getting going this summer. The team's very excited about getting going this summer. They drive me mad asking when we're going to start, um, <laughs> when the equipment's going to start turning up so they can start uh, pulling things apart and putting things back together. And, uh, of course, it's what's the time now? It's 9.25 p.m. here in Finland, and I can see out my little window here. It's still daylight outside now, and the days are going to get longer and longer. So yeah, we're looking very, look, the whole team, we're very excited about getting going. We've been very conservative with our budgets going forward. 
Uh, we don't want to get in the situation where we run out of cash. So we're planning for a slow ramp up, but we're going to be very well prepared. Uh, one of the issues of having the past is uh, testing. So we're going to have the local lab employ some guys. We'll be paying them and they'll be trained there. So when we're ready to go, they're already trained up, ready to go. We're taking all those sort of initiatives to make sure we can hit the ground running. We're not going to drop the ball. Very, very excited. Let's get going. Absolutely, Jim. No, we're, we, we are really excited. I do pinch myself sometimes in thinking that Pilar bought this for just 30 million Canadian in stock. Oh, yeah. And, well, that's uh, the other thing, Jeremy, is yeah. uh, I know we've got great geology around where we are, but way down in Mill, anywhere, anywhere in the district, and at 500 million a throw at the moment, no one is going to build another mill anywhere near us. We'll be the only mill in this area, probably certainly for the next 50 years certainly for the next 50 years. So any other discoveries that are uh, happen to be made around the area, they'll be coming our way as well. Just going to be running oh, the next 50 years, easy. Absolutely, mate. So, you know, if you compare Rupert Resources with the billion market cap, they still need to spend another half a billion to build a mill. I know they've got better grades, but uh, everything's built. The team's on site, fully permitted and ready to produce. We, we, and we think we'll get this up to 80,000 ounces. Um, which is a fair old clip, you know, for for a, a business that's, that's starting out with a, just a 25 Canadian market cap. Um, so um, I would happily uh, maybe just uh, pass it over to questions. You know, I saw Chris, um, one of our great supporters, Chris Kitemeyer, being with us from day one with Pilar. Chris, it's a one for eight, mate. It's a one for eight ratio for Pilar shareholders. And um, uh, you'll, um, yeah, so everyone gets the free shares as a thank you for their support of Pilar. And, and the new money is exactly at the same price of 50 cents, a seed round of 50 cents, um, which is post money 26 million market cap. So um, we've found a lot of the PLR shareholders have come and uh, wanted to top up their holdings and also uh, obviously introduced to a lot of new shareholders who just love the valuation, love the timing. Um, a lot of, yeah, there is a fair bit of luck to sometimes starting up mines at the right time in a cycle. And we really uh, are quietly confident that the, the gold market might one day have a bit of a move. And we're ready to, even if it's still only 1970, like it away in 1980 today, this business will make a lot of money um, very, you know, as we ramp up. In fact, I think the IRR at today's price um, on these super conservative numbers from Jim, maybe Paolo, if you just bring that valuation table up, if you can bring back the presentation, just give you an idea of the upside to this investment at 50 cents that we're offering stock right now, um, as Paolo brings up the presentation, um, the upside is really, I mean, yeah, the, I'll just, but it, it should be a 10 X, but you know, and, and I'll just show you why I'm not just picking that number out in, in thin air. Um, if Jim does deliver and the boys continue to grow production, then it will be substantially more, but, um, can you bring that up, Paolo? Or probably have they keep going down just to the valuation section? Keep going, mate. There we go. Um, well, there's the DCF. You can start here. The IRR is 81% if we raise 10 million in this round. The multiples of money calculation, and I've never actually knew that how initially until someone showed us how to calculate that. It's 10, it's nearly 11 times your money at $2,000. Uh, and there you see it, the various different gold prices. And the DCF, based on Jim's ultra conservative on the next slide, Paolo, the DCF uh, is $4.50 a share. So, again, it's backed up by the DCF. We put 5% debt because that's the debt that uh, friendly debt financing, that uh, vendor finance from Pilar, that Jim will accrue much lower than market rates. So, you know, the upside is significant. If, if he beats expectations, it's even better. And even uh, you can get an idea at $4.50 a share, the market cap's only $118 million. I mean, there's some explorers in Finland that have got the same much higher market caps and uh, they're years away. We actually, just so you know, on exploration, we have no interest in exploring anything outside of those two beautiful pits. So actually, Jim has been giving up ground. And I'll tell you why. It's because it's very expensive to hold ground in Finland really, really expensive. And we think we've got, as you see, a multi-million ounce deposit there. And why, why go any further? So what else? Uh, 
Taylor, shall I hand it back to you, mate? And um, any questions or? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, thank you guys uh, for presenting. That was a, a great walkthrough here. Um, just a reminder to everybody on the line uh, that you can type your questions into the chat at any point here. Um, so I, I guess with this, you know, the, the big catalyst is, is the, the race you're doing and then, uh, you know, obviously looking to list later this year. Um, what are, you know, for, for, you know, maybe new listeners on the line, what's the best way to, to, to follow the story and, and get updates? Oh, well, we do a regular update for Pilar and Liva now. Um, we, we write an update every month, um, but you'll, you'll be hearing a lot more news on Liva over the next four weeks. And obviously, as we ramp up production, you'll get regular updates in terms of how things are going. Um, but yeah, we're really focused on getting a listing for Q4. We think that's the right timing to list Liva. It's very clean, because, so it's come out of the administration process, so there's no historical debt, there's no historical creditors, and the previous operators were burdened with numbers, I think, 80 in US. That's all been wiped out, and that's the beauty of buying assets out of administration. And, uh, yeah, we just, um, we're just we going to be really uh, active to update our shareholder base, and uh, we're choosing a shell right now, and um, we want to get listed because we think we've got a great story and we're super undervalued. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Okay. Um, question here um, from Richard, just wondering uh, how do we participate in the offering presently? Oh, we'll just uh, contact Red Cloud. Red Cloud have got the sub doc and the, uh, the details. Would love to get you involved. Um, yeah, we, you know, the interest has been really strong. Um, and so um, we'll take more than 10 million. I think we probably will take a bit more. Um, and that's so far the indications of where we're heading. And um, like I said, we priced this thing really well. We, there's no promote, there's no like free shares to management. There's none of that sort of stuff. It's totally clean. And um, we did it because I really think it's time that Liver has a chance to really have a crack at it and um, to take, make full use of the coming summer. I mean, you know, as Jim said, probably in a month's time, it'd be 22 hour sunlight. The snow's gone now. We're ready to go and we're in full swing now. Great. Okay. Um, you know, looking forward, I guess, a bit, you know, obviously a lot of big catalysts uh, this year, uh, and uh, you mentioned the exploration would be only focused on the, uh, the two pits there. Um, I guess looking beyond that, I guess, is there a longer term vision uh, for the, the new company and, uh, you know, any thoughts towards that at this point or just really focused on, on the present right now? It's a great question, mate. I, I, I know, look, people who know Pilar probably think, Jeremy, what are you buying this thing now? You know, next thing is we're buying assets all over Brazil. We're bidding for another asset right now in Pilar. Uh, I can guarantee you, and you have my word, um, Liber Gold is going to be only Liber. There's, we don't want to go off and buy mines in Sweden because there aren't really any decent ones that believe and own all the good ones. We just want to make this a really great success and possibly pay dividends. And um, I used to be a steel analyst in Europe, and I used to go and visit Rautaruki, which is next door to us. I used to visit all these steel mills in Europe in the 90s, and I feel very strongly that the asset that we bought is we bought it literally for cents in the dollar. We're giving everyone a chance to participate at the same level. And um, I used to th – these beautiful steel mills in Europe have massively re-rated. They all got bought by Metal. And I, I think there's a very similar parallel with what we did. We've built – basically bought a very large European industrial business with a super long mine life for cents in the dollar. And um, I don't feel the need to go off and buy anything else. I want to keep this purely um, a Finnish gold producer with hopefully nice dividends for shareholders and not uh, blow out the share count. We want to keep this super tight and um, be just very steady Eddie and Jim just delivering four or 5,000 ounces every month for a very long time. So that's, that's the plan you know, and uh, get a re-rating from that. You see, you know, you see great stocks who pay, pay big dividends um, trade on much, much bigger multiples than we do. So, yeah, this is steady, Eddie, slightly boring, but we just get to 80,000 ounces and don't do anything else. Great. Okay, great. Okay, um, and then just looking at the uh, at the mill there, um, you know, the, kind of from my understanding, it, it needs uh, just a little bit of work there, sorry, a capital injection to kind of get it up and, and going. Uh, it's pretty much ready to, to go. Um, you know, is there any kind of optimization work or is, you know, any 
additional work that you'd work on to maybe improve recoveries, or is it at a very good level now? And, and what's the outlook on that? Go, Jim. Yeah, I've got a bit of feedback there, but uh, no, there's no, there's going to be no holdups, no glitches uh, on the uh, mill side of it. No, there's things we've got to replace in a. Uh, just like a few liners, some bearings, just really basic maintenance. They're just the normal wear and tear type stuff. Uh, maybe one of the jaws and the jaw crusher. That's about all. We've got to do some work on the tailings dam. The uh, last crew that were building the tailings dam uh, got interrupted halfway through, so we just got to pick up where they left off. But that's all got the permits in place. That's got everything we need. There's no, and it's not a huge, uh, uh, it's not a huge job at all. And we can actually, the previously it was to be done in one unit, so it was going to be a life of mine dam, mm. but we're going to split that up into three sections over the next three years, and it'll be life of mine after three years. So, but no, it's uh, the local authority here is very easy to work with. There's no problems. Okay, and in, in terms of the capacity of the, the tailings dam, I, I assume obviously it, it must be uh, sufficient for life of mine, and it doesn't give you much leeway uh, if, if plans change down the road. Oh, they, where the dam is, there's plenty more room for expansion, and uh, the design at the moment is for the current life of mine, so seven years at the moment. Life of mine at the moment is seven years, but I'd expect by the uh, middle of next year, it'll be 10 years. Okay. Be very easy for us to Right. And, um, and, and, you know, if you do need to, to permit more ground down the road, is that process uh, straightforward? And, or what's, what's yeah, straightforward. You just basically pay a bonding fee, uh, per square meter at the beginning of each year you let the mining authority know how, how much land you would like and what the purpose of it whether it's for tailings or whether it's for waste rock and there's a set price per square meter you pay that uh, bonding at the start of the year and that gives you whatever land you've asked for uh, for the year ahead and then the next year you just go and uh, uh, work out your mine plan how much more land do we need pay the bonding fee and so on and so forth. It's very straightforward. It's the fins, they're really organized. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, um, so I'll put out a, a last call now uh, for questions. I, I haven't seen any others come in. Um, you know, maybe just while we give people a, a moment here, um, just uh, Jeremy, if you want, if you have any final uh, last words for the viewers. Look, I think if you ever have a chance to come up, guys, you will just be blown away. It is you, the minute you land in Helsinki, which is by far the best airport in the world, um, uh, it is everything's just like perfect. Everything's built properly. Everything is high quality. As Jim said, the Finns are just superb engineers. Everything is just meticulous. They're like Germans um, squared, and um, they are just a, a wonderful group to work with. It's by far the best jurisdiction in Europe as a mining uh, country. Um, you know, if not in one of the top ones in the world. Uh, and what's also important is you've had previous groups do all the hard work on this project. They've built it. Um, they've, they started opening the pits for us. They've done thousands and thousands and thousands of metres of drilling, and it's all been handed to us um, straight out of the administration process, debt-free, creditor-free. Um, and, you know, it's just a great opportunity. It's I pinched myself that we bought this so cheaply. And I want to make this an unbelievable success. And I know Jim and the team will. And we've got amazing backup from Brazil with Paolo, Roberto. Um, Hamon, you know, can come up when Jim needs us on the mill or Israel on the pits. We've got a great, we, 11, we employ 1,100 staff in Brazil. So, you know, we can always bring those up as our sort of, you know, uh, coaching staff as uh, we, we've, we go along. So it's just going to be an amazing success. And I just can't wait to get back actually i love finland and you if you ever get a chance you're most welcome to join us anytime excellent okay and uh, just a, a comment i guess or just highlighting the you know the point you made is the you know the valuation that you're you're looking at for this compared to that replacement value is uh, really uh, you know impressive to see that uh, discrepancy there yeah. yeah no it really is i mean we did we did take one of the largest gold funds in the world up recently um and it was a bit small for them but they loved it and they were totally blown away by the infrastructure totally blown away and what's interesting what's really great about it is this is built with top top labels you know 
I mean, Jim, Autotech, Metso, ABB, Tissant, Krupp, Siemens, no Chinese sort of, you know, stuff that breaks down. This is really top end. Even Barrick probably doesn't have a mill as good as this. And uh, we're just now we're discovering after four months of work with the boys in the geology team, we probably have a, an ore body that could be a three, four million ounces as we drill in all directions. So, yeah, been a great couple of months, super excited, love to get you on board, and uh, we just can't wait to start producing and have first shipments at the end of July down to Zurich at MKS Pam. Fantastic. All right, so I think we'll, we'll wrap up there. That's a, a great uh, line to end on there. Uh, so I would like to uh, thank Jeremy, Jim, Paolo, and Roberto um, for taking the time to host the webinar today with Red Cloud Securities, and thank you to everybody on the line for tuning in with us. Great, mate. You guys are the best. Thank you so much, Taylor. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Thank you.